Hey everybody, it's Adrian. I've got my work hair on, I've got a dress ready to bustle, so let's get into this. Today we're gonna to be going over the 101, the theory. We're doing a whole all-in-one video about ballroom bustles. Um, I have on the mannequin right now a dress that is um, a very narrow A-liney situation. Um, this is not one that I see a ton right now, but it's uh, a couple of layers here to handle and I thought it'd be a really great example to show a demonstration on a ballroom style bustle. Cause there's a couple ways to approach it. Uh, depending on how you learned and what the dress is in front of you, there's some ways to approach it that are a little bit different. So let's get into this. The tools you're gonna need, possibly a tape measure. Um, you're gonna need some safety pins and then some regular straight pins. And as usual, the safety pins are to mark your pickups and the straight pins are to mark your anchor points. So you're definitely gonna need some of those. And let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is evaluate the dress. Now, this is the center back seam here. I have one layer of crinoline and one layer of lining. And depending on how the crinoline acts, this might be able to go up all together, which would be super awesome. I'm going to presume that the floor length is the height of this bride. This is a sample dress, so it is not for anybody. And I'm going to use some different colored pins. I have some pink ones to mark the hem, like the floor length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the gown into the floor and tuck in just like that. I'm going through all the layers, making sure everything is lined up. I want the center seam of the lining and the center seam of the dress matching. And then I also have some side seams here. And then I have some, a panel that's right in between the side seams. So like a um, two, there's four panels to the back. So I'm gonna go through and do floor marking on all of these. Now, generally, a ballroom doesn't come all the way around to the side seams, but sometimes it can, depending on how full the dress is. So we're gonna just go ahead and mark over to there for right now. Um, I don't have the front of the dress hemmed and it's not to the floor, it's a little bit on the floor. Um, you would ideally wanna have your hem either finished or at least pinned first so that you can blend your bustle into that um, finished length of the front. Okay, so I have those marked. Now you can take floor to waist measurements and mark those on your notes if you want to. Um, but I'm more of a fan of figuring out on the person on the dress because you can take measurements all day long, but if a high hip or a flat foot or something different about how they stand. Maybe they stand and balance onto one side. Um, I would rather get it on the mannequin or on the person exactly as it sits. So you can take like a bottom of the zipper. So just make sure you use a landmark. Um, this dress has no waist. So I would say from center back, bottom of the zipper to the floor is 32 inches. Just like that. Now, the reason I'm not gonna rely on that solely is because once you flip this all under, it might be different. So back in the day when dresses were super simple, one or two layers, kind of like this one, you could just mathematically figure your bustle out and not even have the client there. You could just figure out how many points it needed and go. Um, and it was usually passable, you know, pretty good length. That looks pretty all right. This is one of those thinner dresses I was talking about. Um, but nowadays, I think it's good to get the floor measurement, but also to do the folding under so you can see what's happening in case it's so puffy that it rises up, if that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna take that down really quick because I wanted to see if we're gonna be needing to do stuff like that or not. Okay, so I have my floor measurements marked. How many points is this going to be? Um, there is a rule of thumb in quilting that I like to use for this. So in quilting, I've heard if you have the width of your hand, basically you should have the quilting be at least that close so that your batting doesn't slip around. Um, there is a similar rule of thumb I like to follow for 
um, pickups on a bustle like this. I like to do seams like this and then I fold the center back to that seam and then I do in between. So I either do half if it's nice and close. See that's like about nine or ten inches apart. That's going to be perfect. You don't want to have too many points because you don't want it to be expensive and difficult to do but you want to have enough that it's going to pick up what you're going for. And then I will take this, that other seam and use that as my spacing to get the next one over. So yes, you can measure all this out or you can figure it out on the bride like this. So we have the center one and then we have one, two, three. So this one's probably gonna be seven points to flip up. And this is me holding everything all together. There's only one tack here and how I have it pinned. Um, I could do another tack along um, the crinoline and the lining. Um, you know, a swing tack, just like this one that the manufacturer put in. Um, and this would help her get the best price point because it's using less points than if we were to separate everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm folding it and going from here to mark all my points. I think I don't have that many safety pins down here. It's been a busy day of pinning things. I might just be out of pins, which is totally fine. Busy is good. So we're gonna use that spot and possibly this spot. Now, I might not need these two furthest over points. It might be good without these. Now, sometimes those far um, ones that roll back up into the hem on the front edges, sometimes those need to be snaps because they're not, um, there's not enough room to hide the ribbon per se. So you either tie the ribbon into a bow and leave your point there or you put a snap. So you just have to kind of feel that one out based on how it goes. Okay, so I have all my pickup spots marked to give these a try. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the center back one up first and pin it vertically. So I'm gonna hold the pin that I put in at the floor and I'm gonna go up onto the lining, onto the fold, because I want it to match up with the seams of everything. The first one being the most accurate is gonna be helpful because if it's twisted a little, if it's off one direction or another, it's gonna skew all of your other markings. And then I'm gonna skip the second ones. I'm gonna go right to the ones that are gonna be on the next seam. And I'm gonna see if those can go onto the seam also. So I have matched up back here, seam. And I'm just gonna take a look and see what that does. If it fluffs things out too much, if it looks good, I'm gonna do this other seam. And obviously you can't really see what I'm doing behind because it's, it's behind everything. So let's flip it over so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm pulling my pickup point and you can see it lines right up with the seam on the lining as well. And I just want it to be nice and flat. I've got kibble going in my nose right now. That's always fun. Okay. So there I have the base. And this is where I want to see if it's going to work or not. So just because I marked the floor doesn't mean it's going to actually work with the situation that I'm doing. Oops. I fluffed it too much. And it is important to decide if she wants to keep the crinoline in or not. If she's not sure if she wants to keep the crinoline, then she needs to decide that before you can carry on. Because otherwise this is gonna be a different story and it's gonna affect the length of the bustle. So definitely get the crinoline situation sorted out first. Okay, so this looks pretty good. You can see it's a little bit high right here because of how fluffy it is, but it is floor length. So now I'm gonna flip this under and look at the center pin that's gonna go up here and see where that needs to go. So you can see that these two, this is the center back, this is the side seam, this one's a little higher and this one's a little lower. So what I'm gonna do on the outside is look for what half, what half is and like right in between. 
So I think my center point is going to go there because it's a round shape, so chances are it's going to arc somewhere in there. I'm going to grab this pin underneath, and the pin, I, I put it like a plus, like it's like a little X behind here. So I'm holding it behind to grab it with my fingers. And let's check and see how that looks. That's pretty okay. Okay, I'm gonna rotate and do that other one. So the same thing. And like I said, you totally can use a tape measure. You can be super precise with this at your table later if you want to. Um, I like to just make sure I can get this on the bride and get her to approve it, make sure she likes it at the fitting time. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the um, next set or next pairs. And you can see how the bottom is like crispy from having the crinoline all folded. Um, this actually might be a good thing for the ballroom style. So the ballroom bustle, the only drawback to this bustle is that this fold will be dirty when you let it down. No matter how high you make it off the back of the floor, it's gonna be dirty back there. Just from any time she sits down in it and then gets back up, it will touch the floor. So you wanna just make sure to let her know that ahead of time, and by her I mean your bride, um, that if she's having photos done with it, like the next day, maybe to give a week, have it cleaned, and then do photos. A lot of brides do like really editorial photo shoots after their wedding in their dress all over again. And so that's one, you just wanna talk about that so that they know um, to build that into their schedule, or maybe they'll choose a different bustle style. You never know. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my side seam. Now, okay, generally speaking, this would be handled from here forward with the hem. So chances are this would already be to the floor. So I'm gonna just do a little mock pin up on the edge here because my seams go um, on the front of the skirt, side, team, side seam to side seam, like bangs almost. I just cut that part. So I'm going to pin that as if this was already gonna be the right length in the front because that's how I would be doing this in the first place. So that's going to be my mock hem because that's, that's what I would do. Okay, so let's say our dress is perfectly hemmed to the floor in the front. So now we have to deal with this section. So what's left over between here and here? Now this looks different than it would if it was already hemmed because I would have blended this out. So this area would actually probably be a little bit shorter and wild looking. So that's where I said that your pickup point might need, might need to actually be a snap back there because right now I'm going to be able to fold this up perfectly just fine with no, no situation. So that's almost a little bit of a, a unfair disadvantage on, on my part because I can just fold it up to perfection right now. Whereas on an actual hem dress you might have a little bit of some finagling to do. Okay. So there's my side seam. So again, I'm just going to handle between here and here. Isn't that much easier when you just look at section by section? That's what works for me and I really like it. So I'm going to hold and fold Just like that. So this is how I would pin it on them at the fitting for approval. I would show them all the angles. I like to have them turn side to side so they can see that the bustle is not going to block their butt. <laughs> and it looks really nice and soft at the bottom. And the crinoline being folded does give it some puff and fluff, which she might really love. If she doesn't love that, then I will separate the layers and repeat the process on all of the layers. So what that would be, and honestly, I would start, I would keep this. I would keep my marks just on the top so you don't lose all your information. And then see what's been affected. So if she wants to separate all the layers, maybe she wants it less fluffy, totally fine. You just need to kind of readjust. 
So I'm unpinning, but I'm saving the pin on the top layer of the fabric right now. Okay, so this should all fall down. Okay. So, what I would do then is clip this, put a snap here for the future, just like that. And maybe you're wanting to create a different volume look altogether. Um, there's a myriad of reasons why you might need to separate this. Um, on this particular dress, the seven points all together would be the best option. But you might have a scenario where you can't lift everything all up like that, or a combination. So this might be a sheer layer on a dress that you can't ballroom because it would look weird. And you just need to ballroom the lining portion so that it doesn't protrude. So that's a very uh, realistic scenario. And separating everything. And now sewing this in obviously is a whole other ball of worms, but that's fine. We can go over that as well. I mostly just want to cover the, to start how you're going to fit it so that you know what information you gather at your appointment. Scoop this up. When I'm fitting a bride, I will hang the dress fabric up on her just like this. Sometimes I'll have her reach back and hold the top layer for me, but if I have pins in it, I don't want her to poke herself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pin this up with like a couple American points and see if that would solve that. And then I'm going to repin the top layer to see what effect that has had. So I'm going to grab the center back seam right at the top of the crinoline. And I'm going to pick it up till it's right at the floor level. And I think maybe just... This dress is very narrow, so I think I think three is overkill even, but I'm gonna pin three spots to get this off the ground. And you can see this is how different price bustles come about. We all have a different way of approaching it based on our tastes, our training, the dress, the bride's budget. There's so many variables that it's really gonna be hard to say, oh, that dress has to be bustled this way or the price has to be this money because um, there's all these different scenarios for variety. Okay, so let's see what impact that has made. Nothing, none of my other pins have moved. I'm just gonna fold everything back up exactly as I had it before. So now this is seven, eight, nine, ten. This is 10 points separated. So for me, this would be including snaps and three more points. So this is, um, more expensive obviously I charge like 10 for the snap I charge um, 15 per point so unless the dress really needed this this wouldn't be my go-to for this particular dress just because this is more expensive this cluster that's gonna happen over here wouldn't exist if I had it hemmed so we're gonna kind of ignore that for the moment okay Okay, so let's take a look. It definitely hangs different. Science. Um, this definitely has a little bit of a different volume. I think it kind of holds it out a little bit more, um, more mermaidy almost, doesn't it? So it actually holds the shape out better because the crinoline has gone up instead of with the bottom. So the bottom is a little flowier. Uh, and again, there's no legs in here. So if there was somebody with their leg and you know butt in this dress, this would probably be a very prominent detail. Now I feel like I don't need to adjust much, but I feel like a couple of these points are a little bit long now. Yeah, I'll move that up a half an inch. Yeah. I like that much better. So not a ton of readjusting to do, but yeah, this, uh, the points that are just one left and one right of the center seam do look a little bit better up about a half an inch. Oh, that's fun. 
Okay. Yeah, so that kind of changed the volume, that changed a little bit of the details. So I'd say both of those are actually pretty cool depending on uh, the scenario and the dress and the bride's perspective. Now, like I said, again, ignore that because that's where the, the hem is gonna roll around. So we're just looking at back here. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I would just adjust that a little bit because now the volume has changed. Um, essentially the crinoline is up here now, it's higher than it was before. So this is the kind of stuff I've always wanted to talk about because I see this when I'm fitting people and this makes it really fun and challenging, but this also is what makes it kind of nerve wracking because there's so many different options to accomplish the same goal. These are both ballroom bustles, but they have different outcomes. And they're about, I don't know, $75 difference than each other. Um, so you want to show your brides as much information as you can if they're fitting. This might be um, something you listen for mo more so than offering her these two different versions. Um, if you hear budget, don't separate the layers, you know, unless the dress really needs that from you. If, um, if you hear that she wants to add volume down here, this might actually do that for her because it holds the dress out wider. So listen for keywords when you're trying to figure out what options to show them for bustles. So that way you're not giving them too many options that are similar enough. Cause like most people would look at this and not see a difference between the two versions that I just did, but I'm sure you can see it even on camera. And even if I don't put them side to side, cause I don't know how to edit that, but I know you can tell the difference between these two just from looking at the angles that I've shown, but a bride might not necessarily be able to discern the difference between the two in order to make a good decision at the appointment. So the goal is you want to get her to approve something so that way you can move forward in a direction you know she's going to be enjoying. Um, so cool beans. This was a fun one. Now, as far as when you sew this in, both of these get different install styles, um, as far as hardware and, you know, how you're going to be placing all the things. Um, there's probably 40 different ways to do these based on where you're from, what's available to you. If you're a button and loop person, if you're a hook and eye person, I personally like ribbon ties in a, in a few different configurations. Um, the first way that I showed, I would sew all of the ribbon ties to the liner and then uh, crocheted loops at the hem and I would tie up beautifully easy. There'd be no points to worry about on the top layers or anything like that. This one, this method, um, you'll have stitch points on anything that's not on a seam. So there'd be a little stitch point here to here and maybe at these side ones, but you could use these three seams to hide stitch marks for some ribbon ties there. Um, so. Again, you're listening for if she's very detailed, if it's a crepe dress, go ahead and flip everything under to the liner. So that way you don't have anybody asking you anything about any stitch marks for any reason. It's just better to cover your patootie than to try to explain. Even well-sewn stitches on ribbon on a crepe or a satin dress is still gonna draw the attention of a very, very particular bride. And that's totally fine, her prerogative. Uh, but that way you don't even offer it and you build yourself a headache. So I would do the other version then. Okay, well, this was the beginning situation. I would love to show how to do an install on this um, at some point, but like I said, there's so many varieties, so it's hard to make an exhaustive video on it just because um, it's nice to see one that's real and what you're working on because that's gonna give you the best um, combination of reality. So sometimes you can use a button and loop to accomplish something that you couldn't do with a hook and eye or a ribbon and loop um, and it just really depends on the scenario. So instead of me making up a bunch of scenarios, I'd rather show you on something that's real so that way you can see what an actual situation might look like for a real dress and a real bride. But yeah, this is how you collect all the data that you need um, at your fitting to get the information that you need for installing your bustle. So once you have this, then you can go home, relax, have your cup of coffee, cup of tea, take it to the table and install your bustle from there and decide what method you wanna use for that but you have everything you need to get going. All right, let me know what other questions you guys have on this topic of ballroom bustles. Um, I absolutely cannot wait to see some comments and hear what you guys are interested in learning more about on this uh, particular style of bustle. Um, ballroom, flip under. I'm sure people call it a variety of different things, but this is this style where it all flips underneath and has a beautiful, almost hemmed look in the back, very red carpet. Uh, moment for a bride at the end of her evening when she's dancing at her reception. Okay, well you guys have a great day or night wherever you are and I will see you in my next video.